So you have a Google TV system. It can be a Sony TV, it can be a Chromecast or even an Nvidia Shield. And what is the Google TV settings that you should change now and which steps you should avoid to don't have the same issues that I encounter with the Sony A95K. If you want to know everything about it, stay tuned until the end of the video. So the first one is very simple and maybe you have already done, but it's to go on your settings and go to apps and remove all the apps that you normally don't use and every Chromecast, every TV or every Nvidia comes with some apps that you definitely don't need. So imagine it was coming with the Disney Plus, I'll come here, I'll basically come here on the bottom, I will clear cache and clear data and after I'll come to the top I'll force stop and after I'll uninstall updates or uninstall completely this app. That will be always the process that I'll do first clear the data and the cache, force to stop and after uninstall. Because if you do in other ways, sometimes you can leave some things behind on your system and you definitely don't want to do it. The next thing that you should do is to come on app permissions. And why? Because many times our apps, they are basically using our microphone or their localization and other stuff that you don't need to be using during the process that you are obviously using your TV, your Chromecast, or your Nvidia Shield. So imagine is microphone and some of the apps you don't need to have permission on the microphone. So you are going to basically take it down. So imagine you don't need the microphone on Disney Plus. Once again, you are going to turn it off. So do it that just to reduce the amount of stuff that is happening on the background of your TV. Another thing that I do on my settings is to come to privacy. I don't need the localization. If you think about it, this is not a phone that is constantly moving from one place to another and I don't really need on the apps that I use to have the localization on. So for that, I also going to turn off because I don't think that is relevant for the usage of your Sony TV, Google TV, obviously Chromecast or Nvidia Shield. And after also I come to usage and diagnostics and I turn it off. I don't need also this on because it's more information, more things that are happening on the background. One of the things that I always do, I come to ads and I'm going to turn it off. If you see here, there is no option saying to turn off ads because I have already done it. But if you never done it, you'll have the option here to turn off your ads. Another thing that I see a lot of YouTubers saying to do it, to use your Google TV to make it faster and to have a better experience is to go on settings, coming on the account, go on your Google account, drop down until you reach apps only mode and turn it on. And I have to say to you guys that it makes no sense whatsoever because you will notice that now when I say, hey Google, it's working, it's definitely working. But now let's turn on the apps only mode. And now that you go back to your home settings, you can see that now I just have here this bar and yes, Obviously there is less things happen on the background that I can also teach you how to make it faster. But now if I say, hey Google, hey Google, you can see that is not really working whatsoever and you're going to have some issues. So let's go back on the settings and go to the account, turn on again, or in this case, turn off the apps only mode. And let's say once again, hey Google, and is working once again. So for that reason, I will definitely don't recommend you to turn on this one. Another thing that you definitely don't want to touch if for any reason you love the um, Google Photos. And I'm one of the big fans of Google Photos, but definitely if you have a Sony TV, maybe it doesn't happen the same if you have a Chromecast or if you have an Nvidia Shield. At least with Google TV on a Sony TV, never touch the ambient mode because if you select something here, is not going to work anymore. And I tried multiple ways to sort this out, even disinstalling Chromecast, installing again, and it just mess around with my TV, even with my Chromecast, it stopped working. Why I like this? Because if you come here on the corner, you can see I have the time and I also have the, the weather and the temperature. And for that reason, I definitely don't want to touch these settings. So if you like Google Photos, 
don't go to ambient mode. Another thing, maybe you don't know how to go to Google Photos with one click. I'm going to teach you very, very simple. You go on your menu, so imagine I'm using my TV and I'm going to press on the back button. And there you have. Now I have the Google Photos working. So if you were not aware how to do it, it's just one press and it's done. And if you want to know how to use the Google Assistant, I will try to explain it a little bit later during this video. Another thing is obviously to improve your experience using the Google TV, there is some essential apps that you should install. One of them is the Side Load Launcher. Why? Because many times there is some apps that you want to use that will not appear on your apps. And for that, you need to use, obviously, this app that you can download directly from your Google Play. And in that way, you'll be able to have the Side Launcher. So just come here, Side Load Launcher, and there you have, open and start using it. Besides this app, I have another app. If you have Android at your home, definitely I recommend to install this app that is Send Receive Files directly from your phone. It's so much easier to install apps directly on your television using your phone but if you have an iphone you are a bit limited and it doesn't work another thing that you should do obviously to make your experience much much better is to organize your apps here and how you change the position of them is very very simple so you just have to come obviously select what is the app that you want to move press on the middle of your remote just stay pressing and after you have the option saying move, open or view details, you are going to press move. And after obviously I can change the position of that app, press again and it will stay in place. If there is any apps that you want to use to control your TV, you just have to come to network and internet. You press there, you come down until you see remote start and here you turn on and turn off. But as you can see, the remote start is off and I can continue to use the A Google so I can control my TV even if the remote start is off. Let's just show to you guys A Google and it's working as you can see. So no problem whatsoever. So you don't have to have this option on if you want to use the Google to control your TV with your voice. If the microphone of your remote is not loud enough, is not working properly as you want with Google to control with your voice the system, it's very, very simple. You just have to go to system, come down until you are going to see built-in mic sensitivity and you are going to change from high, medium and low. I like to have it high because it's more sensitive and it understands everything that I say. But if you think that it's too high, you can drop down or obviously if it's too low, you can bring it up. So you have a better experience using the Google controlling your TV or any other things on your house. And if you like smart home is coming new products to the channel. So definitely if that's something that you are interested to see in, definitely subscribe to the channel. So how we control Google TV using obviously our voice and how we turn that on. It's very simple. Once again, you press on settings, you come to settings, you come to accounts and sign in. You open your Google account, you drop down until you see Google Assistant. You come here, you need to turn on voice control, obviously. You come to view permissions and that's one of the things that you normally have to do. Sorry if it's in Portuguese, but where you see the tick in blue saying active in Portuguese, ativado, you are going to turn it on. And also you can see here on the bottom, you have these boxes and you have to tick them up. But if for any reason they are not ticked, it's sometimes a little bit tricky to do it here. So if you have Google Assistant on your phone, you can do it directly on your phone and it's much, much easier. After you tick all these boxes until the end, that's how I use it. Obviously there is some, if you don't want, you can not turn on. I also have my personal results turned on and that's it. This part you don't need to do anything else. But another thing that people many times forget to do on their settings to use the voice to control a Google TV is to go to channels and inputs. You come to preference channels after you come to interactive applications and you enable interactive applications allow to use tv interactive applications and out of start applications so those two have to be turned on so you can even use your google tv and your voice even if the television is turned off you can see i'm not using my hands hey google turn off the tv sure 
Turning the mad TV off. So now the TV is off, nothing in my hands. Hey Google, turn on TV. Got it, turning the mad TV on. So as you can see, you can do that, but you need to go on channels and inputs. But now let's make the TV a little bit faster and what you should do. So once again, you go on your settings. If you go on system and you go on about, you are going to press multiple times on Android TV OS built. When you start pressing in here, you'll see some numbers appearing on this box that it says no need, you are already a developer. So you press multiple times there until you open the developer menu. As you can see is here developer options and you are going to scroll down a little bit until you see animations. So here is one of them. Window animation scale, I have it off. Normally is animation scale one time. Transition animation scale, you are also going to change to animation off. You are going to animation duration scale and you are going to also put it off. And also another thing that I normally do is if you drop a little bit lower, you can turn on this one, don't keep activities, destroy every activity as soon as the user leaves it. And the other one is to background process limit. So you limit the process to two processes. So in that way, you limit the amount of things they are open on the background. And in that way, your television will continue to be super, super fast. Last thing that you should do times to times is to go on your settings into the system and when you come here you go to the part that says cached data you press there and you clear your cache you don't need to install any app that is just garbage that you are going to put on your TV so just go there clear the cache and you'll be able obviously to clear everything that is on the background of your TV. So these are all the settings that you should turn on, turn off, or even don't touch on your Google TV. My name is Marco, this is Matt Peck. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment below, smash the thumbs up, do whatever you want, but always with a smile on your face. And I hope to see you in the next one.